This week on Soundfield. Since the beginning of time, a series of numbers has inspired the world around us. This number can be seen almost anywhere you look. It's called the Golden Ratio, and you might have seen it before, but did you know that you can also hear it? Have you ever noticed how some pieces of music just seem to make sense? The notes, the chords, phrases, the dynamics, and harmony, they can all feel like they were meant to go together. Well, many people believe that this isn't simply a coincidence, but part of a natural order to the universe, something called the golden ratio. To explain the golden ratio, we asked our friend Joe from It's Okay to Be Smart to fill us in. The golden ratio is the irrational number phi. And like pi, it doesn't end. So instead of saying 1.618033987 and so on, we'll just say phi. So what's interesting about phi? Take this golden rectangle. It's golden because the ratio between its sides match phi. If you cut a square off a golden rectangle, you create a smaller rectangle with the same golden proportions. And because this long irrational number made sense visually but couldn't be explained as a fraction, some ancient philosophers figured it must have a higher meaning. They called it the golden ratio, and later the divine proportion. Which brings us to something called the Fibonacci sequence. This pattern starts with zero, then each following number is the sum of the two before it. And what does that have to do with the golden ratio? As the sequence goes higher, the ratio between the numbers gets closer and closer to 1.618, or phi. Many believe this sequence could explain growth in nature. If you connect each corner of the squares with an arc, you get a golden spiral. Look familiar? A lot of people see these golden spirals everywhere. I didn't know anything about golden ratio. I'm just reading, trying to learn, like, okay. <laughs> when in school, I learned it as, okay, a piece of music has a golden section, which is that, that point, that climactic. It doesn't always have to be dramatic, but just something special always happens. Music theorists have claimed to find the golden ratio in the works of many famous classical composers from Mozart to Debussy. Some say the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence are evident in Music for Strings, Percussion, and Celesta by Hungarian composer Béla Bartók. For example, the opening xylophone solo in the third movement has a rhythmic pattern following the Fibonacci sequence, going from 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and then back down 5, 3, 2, 1. So Bartok, I think, was being accused of being really cerebral in his music. So he was pretty notoriously silent about his work. You, you don't see mm -hmm. like notes in the margin with these little details, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have said, well, look, if he was doing this, he was using Fibonacci and the Golden Ratio, you know, why didn't he tell people or why wasn't it more obvious? Couldn't it just be that certain pieces that have that lineup with the Golden Ratio stand out and then music theorists gravitate towards that as an example? Yes, absolutely. For example, the Celesta, that comes in at like bar 77 in the first movement, and that has nothing to do with Golden Ratio or Fibonacci. But the piece in the title is Celesta, right? So that's really important, right? So does that mean, you know, we discount all the other stuff? I mean, I think you're right. You have to look at the, the big right. picture. But then in your opinion, why should people care about the Golden Ratio? Well, <laughs> so what we haven't talked about is how it shows up in nature. So for example, if you go out and look at flowers and you start counting flower petals, most of the time you'll find a Fibonacci number. Think about like if you were gonna grow and plant lots of seeds on a flower, you wouldn't just wanna like equally spread them out. As you got further away from the center, there'd be too much space. Nature doesn't want that, right? Nature wants the sunflower to procreate, so the more seeds, the better. And it turns out the optimal angle of where they're arranging themselves is related to the golden ratio. So put that all together and you've got kind of a nice, beautiful, like mother nature, you know, more, what could be more beautiful than, mm -hmm. you know, mountains and flowers and streams, right? Perhaps that's why musicians have gravitated towards it in terms of if you're writing a piece of music and you have a climax in your piece, you know, where are you gonna put it? You're gonna put it right in the middle? No, you're gonna, you're gonna put it a little off center. So maybe you tend to gravitate towards something like a golden ratio. The climax of Bartok's first movement happens at bar 55, which is not only a Fibonacci number, 
but also lands very close to the golden ratio. Music theorists call this a phi moment. Bartok isn't the only composer to have a phi moment. Finding one is simple. Take the length of a song and then multiply it by 0.618, the inverse of phi. For example, take Under Pressure by Queen and David Bowie. We have a total of 246 seconds times 0.618, which equals 152 seconds. Now listen to what happens at that exact moment. If you look hard enough, you'll start finding it everywhere. Check out Drake's In My Feelings. But were all these musicians writing songs with calculators by their side? I doubt it. Some say we find these golden moments because humans are just hardwired to find order in the world. But sometimes the order of the Fibonacci sequence can be mesmerizing, like in this conical rhythm by B.C. Mandrinath. Mandrinath wrote this as a tribute piece after the death of his father, who had introduced the Fibonacci sequence to him as a teenager. This style of music is Carnatic music from southern India and is characterized by a very complex rhythmic system. Mandrinath used the first eight numbers of the Fibonacci sequence to compose the intricate rhythms in this piece. By the way, this is the Phi moment of this video. I did write a piece using certain elements of the golden proportions and the Fibonacci numbers. Should I play it for you? It's really fresh, but okay. Oh, you're gonna play it live? Oh, let's get it. Oh, I don't hear this. Yes. <laughs> So what I did was I just came up with a little motive and then I fleshed it out until I felt like it could go somewhere, it, something can change. Then I knew, okay, this is the golden section and depending on the rules of the golden proportions, I know exactly how much time is required until the end. Okay, I'll stop right there. <laughs> So obviously here, it changes, right? So yeah. I try to make it as obvious as possible. But that is at uh, the point where 216th notes have passed. And the whole piece has 324 16th notes. Okay. So that point at 200 uh -huh. what the is comes the in? golden <laughs> section or the phi moment. Okay. And this pattern, I use the Fibonacci numbers, so this has five sixteenth notes, and then it goes to eight sixteenth notes, and then it goes to thirteen sixteenth notes, and then it goes back down. <laughs> I don't know. So what was hard was it has to end by what 324 16th notes, right? So it's like, how am I gonna end this? So I, I just bring back the pedal. So. I just kind of try to evaporate it. But it, right. that was difficult about right. this because right. I was working with Not the right. structure. Not right. But you are really the truth. <laughs> You're really good at what you do. Oh, this thank is really you. Tight. <laughs> Using this type of format, this type of structure, is another way of adding a limitation to to what you're doing. Some sort of some sort of puzzle to work around. So I found it really stimulating. People think of limitations and boundaries as negative words. However, when you are a creative and you have so many ideas coming to you, you kind of need those walls to create within. Exactly. Okay. And I, it's, it's so true. Just the template aspect of it is mm -hmm. very, very valuable okay. as a composer. And since you've heard it, can you help me turn it into a piece with perhaps some percussion yes. or some drum sounds? Yes. Maybe something with clapping? Yeah. I got I got some sounds. I got some stuff for that. Okay. I, I wanna I'm excited to dance to that first section though. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was digging cool. the build up. I was digging cool. that too.
Where do you notice the golden ratio? What do you think of our mathematical composition? Comment below and don't forget to subscribe.